Hello. Welcome to the PC Gamer Show. I'm Wes Fenlon. It's August 23rd, 2017. We're still in 2017, uh, unfortunately. Somehow. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll make it through some uh, somehow, as Bo says. So joining me, Bo Moore. Hello. And Rachel Weber, our Hi. recent... Uh, recent co-worker from games radar actually yeah, a couple of weeks and uh we've been trying to get you on the podcast the last couple of weeks and we decided to pull you in this week to help us talk about like all the gamescom news age of empires yes. uh little shenmue action you might have seen star wars would, would you call Jurassic it action World. or would you call it <laughs> lack of action <laughs> maybe lack of action uh there was some kung, questionable kung fu going on um, but yeah, we have a lot of news from Gamescom to talk about this week. We've got some PC games. Uh, as you may have noticed, I am not James Davenport. Uh, I got James sick last week or the week you got before. Everyone's you got everyone sick. I got everyone in the office You've been sick. cycling the sickness I had the like a, a minor cold that uh, I thought like, oh, it would be fine if I come back into work and uh, infect everyone with it. So that is that is what I did. So James is out this week. He sounds kind of like uh, Marge's sisters yeah, from, a from The Simpsons. Too. Yeah, some husks and phlegm going on. Yeah. So uh, I'm taking over the show, and we're going to talk about PC games. Let's yeah. do it. So we usually start off just going through what we've been playing. We can kind of hit that briefly and then move on to all the, the Gamescom news that we have uh, to discuss this week. So I'm going to say, Rachel... You go first. Tell me, what have you been playing this week? Uh, I have taken a break from my Elder Scrolls Online addiction to play some Observer, the kind of weird brain hijacking. Oh, yeah. 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 So that's the the same devs who did Layers of Fear yeah, Bloober, la I believe, last yeah. year or the year before. Yeah. It's been maybe a couple of years since that came out. James was not a big fan of Layers of Fear. I liked it, but then I'm, you know, I'm down for any kind of weird narrative horror stuff. Um, and this is this is kind of a step up from that. Layers of Fear was very much a kind of walking simulator with some paintings. This is much more kind of um, interactive, kind of investigating crime scenes. But mm -hmm. I like the whole vibe of it, the kind of Blade Runner yeah, saddle. Yeah, the, the look of it, I, yeah. I'm like, it's super cyberpunky, and I, I really wanted, I was like, oh, this looks really cool, I want to play it, but then I can't do horror stuff i hate scary things and so i hear that it actually is quite scary uh, so yeah. this, the cyberpunk degree. is not enough to, yeah, to, exactly. to pull you in the, the scaredy cat nature of yeah pretty much of Bo has overruled that yeah you kind of have to jack into people's brains and there's Ooh. you know this kind Creepy. of weird trippy different kind of memory scenes and then there's some kind of creature that's stalking people mm. and there's a lot of um disemboweled bodies and you know does it feel like authentically cyberpunk like does it use kind of the the sci-fi as not just a window dressing but like a really cool uh it's kind does of it have a message you know it's, it i'd say it's like cyberpunk like i mean there's definitely like all you know shady corporations and kind of this idea that you know you people have these augmentations and some people the immaculate have decided not to have them and you know how that's affecting people's lives but it's that's all very much like set dressing. Gotcha. Okay. I, I think that's the way a lot of cyberpunk games go. A lot of cyberpunk mm -hmm. stuff. They, they get the aesthetic uh, or pieces of the aesthetic. They get the tropes in there. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily have like a great statement to make about this, t the way technology influences society and like the messed up ways that we're interacting with it. Yeah. There's kind of things are messed up, but there's not really a, a kind of statement coming out of that it's just like oh things are messed up look at <laughs> <laughs> have Maybe. you seen the um was it Catherine bigelow's movie from about i think it was right before the the millennium strange days uh kind of reminds me of observer because yeah. it has the this idea of you're not exactly jacking into other people's brains like ghost in the shell style but you're there's this weird like uh pulp like fetish community around uh it's uh, like snuff films and stuff yeah. that you can like VR into and sort of experience through somebody else's eyes, like what it's like to be murdered or something like something like that. And that's that's what I think of when I think of horror and cyberpunk mm. kind of mixing. Yeah, that's that's a good movie. All right, Bo, what are, what have you been playing? Uh, surprisingly, not Overwatch very much lately. Although I have always been playing it some, but no, uh, I've been playing something different, which is 
finally visiting a game that I've been meaning to play for a long time. Oh, I know what this is. And uh, exciting. for, I think, good reason based upon current events is I was playing Wolfenstein The New Order. Um, and it's fantastic. And yeah. I killed a whole bunch of Nazis. <laughs> did you keep count? I did nope. not keep count. Does <laughs> the, I wonder if the game has like a it stat. Must be a stat in the, it should have a, a Nazi counter in yeah. there somewhere. I killed a lot of Nazis and it was pretty great. Yeah, that, that game. I love that game. I mean, I think it, at the time when it came out, we were all, who everyone who played it then was really surprised that just you could do a really good linear shooter campaign mm -hmm. and for and not really in the style of, I guess, Call of Duty had sort of been the template for what a linear shooter looks like these days. Yeah. And, and Wolfenstein didn't try to have, like, really open environments with a million approaches and, mm -hmm. like, super complex AI. It was very narrative-driven. The environments were pretty straightforward. You had, like, a few branching paths and, like, some stealth yeah, options, right? For but the most part, it's very, very linear. It just turns out, like, if your story's really good and your gunplay just feels really good and looks really good. Like you can make a damn good shooter like that. Mm -hmm. And that was super refreshing. Yeah. And I think doom kind of did the same. Yeah. Yeah. Doom definitely like similarly. refreshing. It, doom came later, right? Yeah. 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 yeah doom definitely this is followed good, up. Now that. you'll be primed. For well, yeah, it, it was one of those games that like people were telling me like, it, cause it wasn't on my radar at all coming out. Like I, I wasn't a big Wolfenstein fan growing up or anything. And so I was just like, Oh, there's a new Wolfenstein game. And I kind of wasn't even really playing shooters at the time. So was before overwatch consumed my soul and uh yeah it, when it i sort of just missed it but then everybody had told me how good it was and that it was worth playing and so you know with the the follow-up coming soon uh, i was like well i guess i should finally get around to playing this game and so it was good Wolfenstein really fresh in your mind and rachel since you played uh played it too i'm curious what you think like is there anything you really want to see in the sequel that you know, we've we've seen like a few trailers. We've done some hands on, but we don't know the full scope of the new game. I just really love the way they do kind of world building and that kind of crazy, but actually not that crazy anymore. Nazi yeah, see yeah. vibe. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm, and from what we've seen, you know, the kind of little films and things they've done so far, I feel like there's just going to be more of that, um, like turning that up to eleven. That, yeah, I remember when the the first game came out, and there were there's a sequence when you're on the uh, on the train, and you have to serve the the mm -hmm. Nazi uh, villainous uh, like tea or something. Yeah. Uh, and I remember uh, Evan like comparing that scene and some other parts of the game to kind of a Tarantino esque feel of this just like kind of weirdly surreal uh, setting with kind of the the dialogue is sort of stilted, but uh really characterful and yeah. i i think at the time we were like i don't know if a game can pull off channeling tarantino like good <laughs> luck trying it yeah. and i think that worked pretty well and and i'm curious to see how they change that in the new one with like kind of the more 60s weird weird 60s vibe they're going for mm -hmm. uh, they're really good at that kind of it's it's over the top but in a kind of stylized way that makes it seem cool rather than try hard you know that yeah they just pushing it just that little bit further and i think that really works because the the action in in any shooter what you're doing is so ridiculous anyway the actions you're taking mm -hmm. that actually it suits having a story that's as batch it as yeah. Yeah. you know you running around with unlimited guns so we've got bj in a wheelchair for at least part of the game yes and then he's going to be in like a, a weird maybe some kind of body suit or like yeah. brace thing to to keep him mm. moving because uh, at the end of the first game, he's in pretty bad shape. Yeah. Yeah. I played I played a bit of the wheelchair section, uh, which is fun because suddenly you're shooting everyone in the crotch. That's <laughs> your natural. Um, and then I played a bit later on when he's, uh, I think, kind of restored in mm. whatever manner that is and is um, dressed as a fireman. Nice. Um, uh, Buttface Jones in the chat suggested replacing all the stealth segments with large, loud shooting segments and replacing all the laser cutter bits with large, loud shooting segments. <laughs> so I think we know where his tastes lie <laughs> yeah. for, for the sequel. I mean, I, I think that's a reasonable... <laughs> I kind of like the, the, the stealth I actually stuff, really like enjoyed when, the stealth stuff. When you could pull it off. I think I failed at it more often than not and ended up just going out guns blazing shooting everything but I'm, i like to know stealth is an option so i can ignore it <laughs> i'm i'm totally about the stealth and it's it's it like reminded me that i really need to go and play more like focused stealth 
stealthy games. Like some dis- Dishonored. Yeah, I, I gotta I get back no in there. Patience. And I love the stealth stuff. Like, even in, like, Far Cry, even, like, Far Cry 3 or whatever, which is, like, super open world, yeah. and it's, like, kind of hard to plan these stealth encounters. I was like, yeah, I want to stealth in behind and drag people's bodies around and stuff like that. Did so. you have any good stealth kills in Wolfstein that stick out to you, you remember? Uh, not especially, because, like, the stealth stuff, the, the, the animations were... It, it wasn't like Dishonored where like if you yeah. did something you couldn't like contrive these like elaborate you know machinations of taking somebody <laughs> right, out right. from stealth. Yeah. Um, and it's so pretty much stab them with a knife. Yeah, That's yeah. The and there there also wasn't like there wasn't too many. There's some stealth kill games where like if you're hanging from a ledge or if you're dropping down like the the direction you're coming from changes the like stealth kill animation. Whereas this was basically just like sneak up behind them and stab them or shoot them or something but there i feel like there was one or two where like i got a good um like sneak up stab and then like knife throw kill on like two more guys nice. or something that, that felt pretty good i imagine if anything the sequel will have some some more animations just mm-hmm. for for those kind of kills and i feel like i've seen some ones. screenshots with you know neck slicing some, i mean there there were some varied animations yeah. for sure but like i guess i'm talking more about like when you're coming from different directions or different yeah. angles like if you you know if you drop down and do a stealth kill that's like in assassin's creed that's a different animation than if you're coming up from below or yeah just stabbing them in so the back that one's coming up pretty soon looking forward to yeah that definitely Wolf sequel for sure uh i don't have too much to report for for now playing i think the same stuff i talked about last week um but i've been playing a good bit of lawbreakers with with evan and uh and tyler and uh lucas who also works for games radar with rachel and yeah lawbreakers is a is a lot of fun uh since last week i kind of started with like the basic kind of call of duty character who's just like Mm -hmm. he has a assault rifle and he can throw a grenade and and he can run quickly and like that his his skill set is very basic uh very easy to play with but he's he's pretty solid like all around her um but i've switched from him to a class i think called the juggernaut uh, if I remember right, there's like a juggernaut and a titan, which is mm-hmm. like the same, Very the same word, nomenclature. basically. <laughs> uh, but the juggernaut is this big robot guy who is probably the slowest character in the game. But the trade off for that is most of the characters have an alt with a cooldown of like a minute or something that's a super powerful laser beam or rocket or something like that. Uh, and this guy's alt, uh, you can trigger about every five seconds. And wow. it is a a shield where he like armors up and you get probably like triple your health pool or something like that and you're very slow walking around but you can tank a ton of damage and you can also throw up a wall like may style from overwatch Mm. uh which honestly feels unfair in in lawbreakers (laughs) because it's this really fast moving game so much of it is about moving around other characters getting behind them uh and a lot of it takes place out in these large kind of like anti-grav areas in the center of maps but when you're playing some of the games that involve base defense uh like you have to score a ball on somebody's base or you have to take this battery back to your base and charge it as this as this character you can just throw up a wall that completely blocks a corridor and that will just ruin people's chances of like getting into your base to steal something or get to the uh, kind of like the territory point that you're accruing points in. Uh, so it feels pretty <coughs> extremely satisfying, but also pretty unfair when <laughs> someone's like coming in, getting ready to use your alt, and you just throw up a shield that just stops them for five seconds, and they just can't. They just have to stand there and just kind of. You can see their outline through the shield of the <laughs> other person of them standing there and just like, yep, yeah, sorry, you're, you're, like you're the stuck there now. Like the party pooper just it, like rolling yeah, you, in. You are the party <laughs> oh, pooper. this guy. For sure. Uh, but he also has a very satisfying shotgun to use. And nice. people who are really good with the fast-moving characters can kind of get behind you and, and fuck you up pretty quickly. But if you get a good aim on somebody with that shotgun as they're coming in, like you can... Nice. knock them out in one or two shots so that's lawbreakers continuing to have fun with that uh evan carries us every game though it'll be like the scoreboard will be evan 23 kills four deaths and then tyler or or me or lucas with you know seven kills or something <laughs> under, underneath that um but you know i'm gonna say that it's, it's all about the teamwork yeah uh, so we we make it work together 
So yeah, that's if you haven't beautiful, that's a beautiful message. If you haven't tried Lawbreakers yet, I recommend it. It's, it's a good time. All right, so should we move on to some games? Gamescom yeah. news. Games. Yes. Yeah. Games. So, what have you guys uh, been most excited about out of Gamescom this week? New Age of Empires. New Age of Empires. That one is pretty exciting and well i mean cool. a teaser trailer saying <laughs> we haven't, we haven't, we haven't <laughs> seen it yet yeah. but it exists it's being made by relic yes. uh who this is an a, kind of an interesting thing that microsoft has done twice now i guess with first with halo wars 2 they got the creative assembly to make that game uh and the creative assembly is owned by sega so that's that's kind of unusual, I think. Uh, and now Relic, also owned by Sega, is yeah. making another real-time strategy game for Microsoft. And this one doesn't even seem, at least right now, to be coming to Xbox. Uh, I don't think they've talked about that at all. So they're making a PC-exclusive new strategy game in 2017. That's that's pretty cool. I'm so excited. I, would, you know, as I think probably loads of people did, like, grew up playing so much Age of Empires. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the sound of the oh, priest and everything is like burned <laughs> into my brain. And yeah, Age of Empires was my real time strategy game that I played probably more. Yeah. Like, I, I obviously played like a lot of Warcraft and Starcraft too, but it was like Age of Empires way more so than Command and Conquer. I didn't yeah. really get to play much of that one. Was it Age of Empires one for you guys or two? Cause for me, it was two. It was two, two mostly. I feel like I maybe played one some, but definitely a lot of two. Two feels like one of those games that just completely like subsumed its its predecessor like when people talk about age of empires mm-hmm. it's like that street fighter right like yeah. Yeah. if someone says street fighter they're not talking about street fighter one they're talking about street fighter two yeah. and i feel like age of empires was kind of the same yeah the same story uh so they microsoft had announced was it at e3 or maybe it was earlier this year that they're doing the definitive a definitive I believe edition. it was at the PC gaming show. I think I couldn't remember if that was the first time they announced I it. I think that was think the first was. time. Yeah, yeah uh, they... I believe we we announced yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought so. I was I was Beyond positive, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, you guys. Uh, that was the revealed. first time they showed that one off. Yes. Mm-hmm. And at the time, they were saying, you know, oh, there might be some more Age of Empires stuff in the future. So that has happened. Yes. We've got Age of Empires four, and they also announced that they're going to do the same definitive kind of remastering and also touching up some features, bugs, mm-hmm. kind of antiquated elements for uh, Age of Empires 2 and 3, yeah. which is That's really cool. especially exciting, yeah, because we, now we can kind of play Age 2, not just the HD version on Steam, which is already a nice version of the old game, yeah. mm-hmm. but play a game with presumably, like, better online support they probably f- patch are patching some exploits and and stuff that's it like you, you know, go in there it's that kind of nostalgia thing isn't it if you go back into the the kind of steam hd version you go like oh yeah no this you know i've been so trained by games in the years <laughs> since then for things to be kind of streamlined and a bit better that you kind of go back and go it's not quite how i remember <laughs> so yeah i'm looking forward to it all being did did either of you play age three I don't yeah. think so. How how was that one? Because I know it wasn't wasn't received as well as the first two. It was I quite a few think, years later. Yeah, I think from I mean this is years back now, but I think uh, I believe I got it for a birthday or something. And I remember being like excited by the novelty of kind of new things and new new graphics, yeah, new, much more detailed, right? You know, tech trees and things. But still finding myself going back to two and just playing more two. That, um, I'm I'm really curious if the third one is going to get sort of the the heaviest touch in terms of tweaking anything that mm-hmm. was maybe wrong with that with that game. I don't really know why it never felt like kind of the great sequel to Age of Empires 2. I mean, maybe Age of Empires 2 is just one of those games that yeah. it came out at the right time. It, was, it had the right features. It was designed so well that almost any sequel was going to inevitably be a disappointment. I when, don't know if that was the case. When did it come out? Three? Three. I want to say like 2007. Mm. Um, I, I feel like I could that, be totally off. I'm just guessing. I, I mean, I'm guessing that basically like were RTS games really that popular around then? I mean, that's around the time when StarCraft II came out. I think they were on the on the way down. Uh, so it was 2005 when H3 okay. came out. So it was definitely a waning period yeah. Yeah. for for RTS. Um, but that's around the time it's Command & like the, the 3 came out, which was a great game. It's like the, the quiet period between the, I guess, golden age of 
Age 2 and Warcraft 2 and Starcraft and all that, and then if you could call it a resurgence, which basically I'm just saying, like, Starcraft 2 coming out, and what, yeah. what, I'm, I'm guessing that was, like, 06 or 07. Uh, let's look up. When was Starcraft 2? I feel like it was later than that. 2010. 10, yeah. yeah, so... There was definitely a, a dry period there, <clears throat> and unfortunately I think that has kind of continued for everything except Starcraft 2. Yeah, but, and yeah. even Starcraft 2 is not super popular itself. Yeah. Um, it, it gave think- way a lot. A lot towards the just the MOBA genre in general. RTSs as well really fell victim to being the thing that everyone tried to make free to play, and mm. that really just sucks. And then they just all it. became MOBAs, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I think the even Age of Empires had a free to play, which I desperately tried to <laughs> tried Castle to play. Castle Siege is that what it was called? I can't remember now. It was it was Age of Empires Online or something, mm. and it was like a free to play thing and it just oh, it so I, bad. It was so I have a uh, one of my uncles who has has kind of dabbled in games over the years. Like I, I gave him Warcraft 2 when I was a kid just because I wanted him to play Warcraft mm-hmm. 2. Um and he had like a PS2 and you know would play Grand Theft Auto and stuff like that. Every year I go uh back to visit family and, and see him and like he's still playing this bad like Windows store <laughs> Age of Empires <laughs> free to play game. Yeah. Uh, that's like a touch screen game. You know, and like, oh, man. and he'll, he'll usually say something like, you know, yeah, I get kind of bored with this, but then like, I come back the next year and like, he still <laughs> ha- has been playing it at least a little bit. So I guess it's fun enough. I don't know. There's kind of that core appeal to Age of Empires. It's just like this great historic setting and the uh, the ability to kind of upgrade over the ages yeah. is just like there's a satisfaction mm-hmm. in pushing your civilization forward that I guess works even in a in a. Kind I just of used to I just used to hide game. one priest in a bush, and then like every stray kind of enemy worker or soldier that would walk past and just convert them. And it'd take days of just converting everyone that walked past. I, I loved just building walls. That was yeah. my that was I, my I thing. was the, the consummate turtle in Age of Empires. That was the thing I was never I was never good at competing in any of those strategy games, but when I would play with my down, friends, find base. Could, yeah, just like it was so so much satisfaction in building your base up and then be like, okay, nobody attack each other for four hours. <laughs> I need to build a wall over you know a quarter of the map that's just like twenty mile wall for no for no reason. Other I would just than like make walls out them. of turrets, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was so fun to just build your your yeah. civilization in those games and then let let the the enemy just crash against your gates yeah it was so it was almost like a proto tower defense situation <laughs> almost i i like looking up like screenshots of people's crazy age of empires bases we mm-hmm. had a uh, one of our freelancers jody wrote a really fun uh, article I think last year about like the joy of turtling in strategy yeah. games and I went looking for screenshots for that and inevitably found some screenshots of Age of Empires bases where it was just you know 17 walls thick uh, <laughs> yeah. around you know half the map or something I, would I build, love that would... in any of those kind of games like Don't Starve I loved watching people's videos of their mm. insane I've got you know 17 slow cookers over <laughs> here and... there's, there's something especially like appealing in don't starve about that because you know it could all go away because you can just you just need one accidental die, right? fire <laughs> it's gone, and, yeah. yeah but yeah even your but especially the uh, the shipwrecked i played a lot of the kind of um spin-off and that you, your base could get flooded by the the sea as the tide came in and that was always really depressing mm. everything would just be wet that sounds terrible <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's move on. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2. There's a bunch of uh, footage of the Starfighter assault mode. So it's just like a big space battle, uh, 24 players, I think. And this is... I don't think we've seen any of the space battle stuff from the game. Maybe like some very brief sort yeah, of flashes. In, in-engine yeah. footage, but you know, not really representative gameplay. Um, so let me see if I can pull this. I this will never up. play this, but it's amazing to watch other people playing it. Yeah, did you Did you guys get to check this out at all? See See what it looks like. Mm, I haven't looked at it. Um, so it's. I've seen the video. It's starfighter combat, as you would as you would expect. Let's see here if I can pull this up. Uh, they have a ton of different ships. They, they named, I think, well, like, well over a dozen 
maybe two dozen even different ships that are in in this footage so you've got your obvious x-wings a-wings y-wings tie fighters uh like uh, Poe Dameron's X-Wing from mm -hmm. the the new movies. Uh, I think Darth Vader's TIE Fighter, the Millennium Falcon, of course, and then a bunch of the the capital ships. Like I think this is like a Trade Federation um, battleship. Yeah. Space yeah. Battleship, it looks maybe. exactly how you want it to look, right? That's what I love about it. It, it looks great, and yeah. that's been... But that was kind of the case with the first Battlefront, I felt like, was like it looked amazing. And then the first game you played it and it was kind of like, oh, this is kind of simple. There's just there kind of wasn't enough meat to it. So I'm wondering how meaty this mode is going to feel compared to like Rogue Squadron, for example, which yeah. was never exactly a deep game. It was pretty arcadey, but they just really nailed the feel of the ships. And I think yeah. they did a good job with like the mission design. Obviously, that was a single player game. Uh, this is gonna be, this is gonna be different, um, but it's gonna have different kind of stages of combat with objectives for each side. So it, I don't know, it looks looks promising. I think. It's, Definitely. It's at least nice to see Battlefront sort of expanding. Yeah. Uh, outward from from what they did in the first game, and actually having space battles at all is a, is a pretty good step. So. That's that's Battlefront. I'm willing to to give it a try next next time. The the first one I kind of bounced off of, but yeah. the idea of a class system in this game and uh, space combat is like a, definitely enough to get me to jump back into it. But I'm also a giant Star Wars nerd, so that doesn't that doesn't hurt either. Uh, moving on, Shenmue. Should we talk about Ooh. Shenmue? Did, yeah. did you both watch the trailer for Mo moving on I or did, not was, moving on? You know. Bo was. Uh, I'm just gonna keep making to jokes this, about this. this business. Bo was was watching me like crack up at my desk earlier uh, this week watching the the Shenmue three trailer, which I know people were doesn't very upset about the faces, the Botox. Yeah. So yeah. So weird. this is Immovable. this is early footage. It's like the first teaser video they've shown uh, of the game. Obviously, it's gonna look better yeah uh, it's just fun already to the environments right look, like, the environments look really nice um yeah it's easy to poke fun at kind of kind of harmlessly like i'm not mad at this game at all i'm not angry that it looks I mean, like he it looks does. angry i'm just <laughs> <laughs> does he look angry or does he just look he think, just looks like a doll he's yeah. got an unfortunately small forehead that i think makes him look kind of madder than he possibly is so there's there's just a few shots of uh, like that uh, characters who right there. <laughs> I mean, just, it's just they're just kind of expressionless and expressionless, and also look like they're carved out of plastic. Yeah. I, I mean, I understand this is early days, but I mean, if this is the first thing you're going to show people, just like <laughs> just make their faces move. I don't. <laughs> it's. So I think where where Shenmue is now uh, in this in this footage, it's it's kind of a strange combination of feeling kind of like this vestigial Dreamcast era game with these very simple facial expressions mm -hmm. and, and stuff, paired with a modern uh, a, a modern engine in Unreal Engine Four. So you get this like amazing lighting and yeah. like these super detailed environments, and then these characters who are just like. <laughs> They're very yeah. like Joker plastered on <laughs> smile sort of face, uh, which which made me think if I were if I had been the one pitching this game and, and making it, I think I would have gone for a deliberate throwback and made it look exactly like the original Shenmue mm. yeah. on the Dreamcast. Maybe, you know, have it run at 1080p or whatever, but in terms of the amount of detail and the textures and, like, how many polygons were in the character models, make it a throwback Dreamcast game with just some nice, like, lighting touches here and there and things to sort of make it actually look better, but look how you remembered that first mm -hmm. game looking, you know? I think that would have been a cooler approach and probably a better way to use the the money they have than to try to go yeah. as yeah. high fidelity as they can sort of like a dreamcast shin you take on like pixel art or whatever the the 8-bit era exactly that we've yeah. Seen in a lot of indies. yeah like a, a lot of games that use pixel art and kind of 
uh, are trying to evoke a Super Nintendo aesthetic mm-hmm. or something. They actually look much better than yeah. a Super Nintendo game. They can do a lot more with, you know, with Unity or something, but they're trying to make it look mm-hmm. as you remember, you know, Star Ocean looking back in the day or Chrono Trigger or whatever. Yeah. So I think that would have been a cool approach for Shenmue. Maybe it would have actually been harder than just using Unreal. Yeah. You know, I don't know how hard it is to sort of fake dreamcast <laughs> graphics but i don't know it can't be that hard right yeah it, we say all this as people yeah. have no idea how to how to do it but yeah G- granted we we are not experts on on game creating game graphics yeah. and, and everything that, that entails um but that's what i would have liked to see i think i still think it's going to be a fun game it's going to be quirky it's going to be weird but i think mostly shenmue fans just care about getting the rest of that story well that's it i think there's you know it's kind of it's on safe ground there's been people have been waiting for it for so long that they'll forgive it anything i think once it's here hopefully it'll turn out well though that's always the hope wes we'll see uh okay so here's the big one final fantasy 15 is coming to pc that was the i think that's the biggest news at gamescom for us other than age of empires 4 those those two were the the big stories um yeah we we've been hoping final fantasy 15 was going to come to pc uh i think it was around the release of the game that uh the directors said they um they wanted to bring it to pc but it would probably take about a year and i think that's about how long it will have been i don't remember yeah. when it when it hit consoles but they're saying early 2018 for the pc version yeah that, that would be about right i think Mm-hmm. So that's that's big news, and I think it bodes well for what few Final Fantasy games are not already on PC making mm-hmm. their way eventually. Yeah. They've hit they've hit most of the library. I mean, uh, it is it's you know it's the first Final Fantasy I've played in a while that I've really kind of loved and lost myself in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really? so I mean, so it's absolutely mental. It, it's <laughs> and it, there's this wonderful kind of weird homoerotic road trip vibe to the whole thing, and you know. <laughs> But it's it's really really good Final Fantasy. So yeah, tell us more about the homoerotic road trip because yeah. well, I don't so, think Bo and I. So there's Bo you know there's, I, there's basically a boy band uh, of four, each each with their own with unique their personalities. Own little and, here. Yeah, um, that go off and uh, they're off on their sort of convoluted, very complicated quest. So there's Noctis who is like a kind of. Um, so what you, I'll, I'll narrate. What you're seeing here, yeah. the little blonde one is Prompto. His special skill is photography. That is Noctis, the angst prince. His special skill, fishing. Oh, good. <laughs> um, As you would expect from an angst prince. <laughs> yes. Uh, you also have uh, Gladius, who is the big, uh, bare-chested the man. One, yeah. Yes. Um, he kind of find. He's kind of good at exploring and finding things. And then Prompto um, is the favorite, right? Yeah, he's the twink. He's the cutie. Um, but everyone quite likes Ignis as well, who is... So every every time you camp and sleep over, uh, Ignis will cook you up a meal, depending on the um, ingredients you've got. And also when you're out on various trips, if you kind of are picking up ingredients, sometimes he'll go, huh, and write down a recipe. So it's this weird kind of um, strange, you know, and they're always making jokes about it being bath night and stuff so um, it's it's a very strange world but it's one that's so big and beautiful i mean it looks i I've been, was playing it on um, a playstation 4 pro on a 4k tv and that was looking amazing so i'm mm-hmm. really excited how it can look on pc and so this footage we've been running is from a, a video that square and uh nvidia put out showing off Mm-hmm. basically how pretty it's going to look yeah. uh, on PC and talking about uh, some of the effects that they're, you know, like the NVIDIA game works, like graphical effects that they're going to be uh, putting in the game. They haven't really talked about system specs uh, or like performance stuff yet. Mm-hmm. We uh, we asked them, our, our writer Joe wrote up a preview of the game from Gamescom. He got to play it, said it played really well, but he was also playing on like an i7 CPU and a 1080 yeah. ti so surprise it, it works really well, well yeah. <laughs> um so we don't know if it's going to be 30 or 60 fps which i think is a big big question mm-hmm. uh obviously we would hope that it would run at 60 or even unlocked that would be amazing yeah um and we don't know 
too much about you know what it's going to take to run this game decently on a system you know whether it'll run fine on an i5 what kind of graphics card you're going to need i'm sure if you have a 1070 or a 1080 you'll be fine but if you have something lower than that uh still have questions about how well that's going to run yeah. the, the name is sort of weird they're calling it final fantasy 15 the windows edition windows edition yeah that's a final fantasy 15 we it's a slightly strange strange name there yeah um i mean more than anything for me what i'm kind of excited about is like i i love final fantasy games and grew up on them and was like you know the seven eight nine ten era was yeah, was same. my jam same. and kind of after the i guess 11 and 14 are the mmos and then 12 is good and 13 is garbage and correct um just like basically i haven't had like a good single player final fantasy game yeah. no, in a long is, time and this is and, good and it's you know it's the yeah. combat satisfying the world's stunning and uh, i hear the story gets it goes a little off the rails i, I expect it to <laughs> it does the story you know. is a bit crazy and they had problems on the i think they had on the console one like Almost as soon as it came out, they then came out and went, oh, we're going to add some more bits to the story that might make it make more sense. There was like a chapter, so, an infamous chapter nine or something, yeah. in, right? The, that they were um, like, oh, we're going to... It was like when Kanye put out, what was it, <laughs> Wolves or something, he put out an album, he's like, oh, I'm going to fix that, that yeah. one track. Like as soon as somebody criticizes, like, oh, I'm going to fix it. I think Square so I think the by the time way. you guys get it, I'm sure what they'll do is pack in all that kind of extra yeah. Yeah. stuff. But. Like, because yeah, all that sort of turmoil around the launch and stuff sort of turned me off on it and so and then also like i i'm play everything on pc like i don't have a ps4 pro or anything to play this so i just haven't played it yet so i'm pretty excited to finally get a chance to to dig into this new final fantasy it's or it's new to me yeah so they're they're saying early 2018 uh it's gonna run like up to 8k if you have the hardware for that yeah. no one's gonna have the hardware for that or a monitor for, <laughs> yeah. for that really um but but future proofing i guess um, I mean, yeah, I, I guess you could run it at 8K and then downsample to 4K. You could try, yeah, you could try. Um, Good luck with that. Yeah, you know, what is, what else is there to say about this one? Uh, mod support is something that they said that they want to do. So I don't yeah. think there's been like a really specific confirmation of yes, we're going to have mods and this is how it's going to work. Um, but I know that they said they they want that. So Steam Workshop for this game would be amazing. I'm guessing. It's probably not going to have something that integrated. It will yeah. probably mm -hmm. be a bit more ad hoc, like people just hacking into the files and figuring out how they can mod stuff. But there's like a fairly active community of people modding the older Final Fantasy games on PC, yeah. hmm. uh, just either fixing little issues with the ports or or kind of just mucking around with them. Like I know people have made the the port of like Final Fantasy VI, for example, look a bit nicer than the god awful like mobile <laughs> garbage uh that, that square put on pc yeah. so hopefully final fantasy 15 pc gets some some cool and weird mods well, i think it's got such a invested community that you know you're gonna see some like i want to see character models for yeah. for all the cast you know like play just play as the stay puff marshmallow man <laughs> or, something, or or play as the ghostbusters why not yeah Classic road trip. Angst-ridden Ghostbusters. Uh, so that's Final Fantasy XV. Let's move right along to the da, next da, da, Gamescom da, da, da. news. Uh, Jurassic World Evolution got announced. This was, I think this was a surprise for for most of us. Yeah. Or for no, everybody. I don't think anyone had, I hadn't heard any whispers. So Jurassic World Evolution is a uh, park builder, city builder type game uh, from Frontier, who made Elite Dangerous and also made uh, Planet Coaster yes. mm. last year. And they, I think a large part of their staff had also made the older, like, Roller Coaster Tycoon yes. games. Is that right? So they, they obviously have a history with making these kind of games. And this feels like a pretty amazing pairing of, you know, their talents for making a game like Planet Coaster with making... I feel like I used to have... In my younger days, a version of Zoo Tycoon that was dinosaurs. You there, know, there was I, I do remember that was there was DLC? a Jurassic Park game just yeah. like this about twelve years ago or something, early two thousand. I feel like I definitely played it in a like middle school computer lab. <laughs> <laughs> played some sort of dinosaur wrangling thing. Yeah, I don't remember the name off the top of my head, uh, but there was a Jurassic Park Park Builder game. Um, 
but obviously this one is yeah. going to be much newer and probably using the same engine as Planet Coaster. They we reached out to them to try to get more details on it, and they haven't. Unfortunately, they're keeping keeping it close to their vest for now, so we don't know much more than. Well, I'm sure it's that thing of the minute you're doing anything with a kind of movie IP as well, you're under pretty strict rules. You about have to get what everything checked and by and, yeah, know, talk se- about seventeen and... producers and stuff. Uh, so this is all just like a cinematic kind of yeah. showing you what the game's going to look like. But I think we can get a taste of like what the gameplay is going to be is going to entail uh, through this video, which includes dinosaurs eating people. Yes. Uh, shit going wrong. Uh, lots of jungle with some kind of high-tech park buildings in the background. We've got, a, like, a monorail going around. So Probably a tiny house for Chris Pratt that you can build. <laughs> yeah, what is the movie in. tie-in going to be like for this? Like, is it going to actually have... I guess Jurassic Park, breeds, Jurassic World characters. Species. I don't know like, any of the characters in that movie. What I want to know is, uh, is the objective basically to just, you know, build a profitable Because that's park? surely the joy is having them go on the rampage. Like, like, yeah, like, that's what I wanted. To, maybe there's a, like... Is there a mode? Maybe there's like a button kind of... press that's like, and the things go wrong. <laughs> well, you used to be able to do that in the, uh, at least in the original SimCity games. I think it was SimCity 2000 that Oh, yeah, 2000 played. had the disaster and you attack. Could just, yeah, you could you just, could like, send in go a from Godzilla the file or menu. Yeah, yeah, Godzilla, hurricane or a tornado or, or floods or something, and... I think I would typically build a city for and then three or four hours and, and get bored and just mm-hmm. be like, all right, seven Godzillas, <laughs> let's call that in. Let's just get tornadoes all over the place, yeah. burn I, everything down. It's like when I start deliberately messing up my Sims' lives, making them make <laughs> bad choices. How long do you get into their life before you're tired of them and just want them to die? I mean, not that long. Usually, <laughs> well, because usually I'm trying to build, like, you know, the perfect family and the perfect house, and then the minute they start to deviate from nope, my dreams and aspirations for them, it's like, well, no, you're dead to me, and, <laughs> and then I'm just going to... dead characters. Yeah. I think it would be cool if, if the game, uh, if it incorporates basically, like, a, a resource management, like, being basically a combination of the, like, theme park builder with this, like you know, a, I guess a don't starve type thing where you're man, you know, I, I don't know if it, you want to be actually like mining materials or anything, but, you know, dealing with, cause I, I could see, you know, if you're dealing with power fluctuations or, yeah. or you know, re- the, the resource yes. management of this, and then maybe that's why your fences go down and the dinosaurs start attacking or something. Yeah. Maybe there's like research resources for, yeah. to bring back new, or old species. <laughs> that that would be really cool if if a, you had a tech tree for actually ha- like putting dinosaurs in your park. Yeah. You don't just yeah. magically get all the dinosaurs. Yeah. You have to because I know in in Zoo Tycoon as well. You know you would you were trying to get them to breed as well. But obviously mm-hmm. in Jurassic Park they don't want them to breed. So maybe you're trying to like. <laughs> well, what but what if they what if they breed and running without, around ooh, giving them without contraceptive your, pills. without your permission? Life finds a way. <laughs> I think it would be cool to see a builder game with kind of a survival mode. And maybe this actually existed in the original uh, Jurassic Park game that was kind of in this vein. But when you play City Skylines, they did add disasters to that game eventually. But you don't you're not playing like against nature. You're not like, oh, I have to really like fortify my city and be prepared for disasters is kind of a thing to add flavor to the game. Mm -hmm. But if this had a mode or kind of the way the game worked by default was the dinosaurs are going to escape. Like, this is going to happen. Shit's going to go wrong. You're going to have random storms and power outages that let them do this and eat park, you know, park attendees and stuff. And the whole game is about managing Yeah, the maybe crises. there's a counter for, like, how That's many sort of what I, members what of I the imagining. public yeah. have died, you know. If more than 200 <laughs> it's, people it's die, your whole, park will be the closed. Whole, the whole game is, is yeah. just a PR, like, <laughs> yeah, and dealing with the fallout. <laughs> to d- design your promotional campaign it's like yeah some people got eaten last july yeah, but, but dinosaurs man we're offering great care the real pa- great dinosaur packages experience. right now i mean it's just like the the um the cruise ship where like they had the the disaster at sea where like everybody got dysentery or, or <laughs> diarrhea or whatever and like the ship was broken down and and everything was bad and everyone's like we never want to take a cruise again so like for a while after that you get really good cruise line tickets <laughs> <laughs> for a sale for a song yeah so that that game's going to be pretty great i think if they're building it off the base of planet coaster 
yeah. it's hard to see them going wrong with that as like a really established thing. No, already. the pedigree is there, and it's mm-hmm. you know, I um, can see us all comparing Jurassic Parks. Yeah, who's gonna be my who's gonna be my star dinosaur? I mean, it's got to be a carnival, right? You've got to. Like that's the, what the T-Rex pay is to such see. an easy choice, though. You know, you want you want something like weird, really, right? I want a giant. They're, they're not so yeah, they're not so fashionable cage. anymore. The T Rexes. How about a pterodactyl cage? Mm. Like a... Yeah, that didn't go well in Jurassic World, did it? And I, I, I never actually saw Jurassic they... Jurassic World. Yeah, me either. The new one, yeah. Chris, you how know, are you even talking about this? <laughs> I like Chris Pratt, but I don't know. It just it, all the reviews talk about how generic it was. Oh and... no, it's terrible. <laughs> uh, but you know, you do you, the the pterodactyls escape from the pterodactyl aviary and they. For no reason, kill one slightly arsy British assistant who <laughs> it's been decided deserves to die. Um, that's how, it's that's worth how it usually watching. goes. It's worth watching. It's a good beat movie. All right. So we, we've got a little bit more Gamescom news. Uh, this is kind of a, a smaller one. Um, but the there was a, a talk, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure how this was shown off, actually. But Player Unknown himself uh, showed off a new... In the works map. Brendan? Yes. Uh, Brennan Green, I believe is his he name. He seems he's a very nice man. He, he really does, yeah. He, he, he was not nearly as mysterious <laughs> as you would expect <laughs> when, he, when, he, when, he, when he came Player on. Player right unknown. He was on the Xbox stage at E3, yeah. I think, right? And he just, like, just seemed like kind of a nice guy. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he, uh, he had some kind of talk uh, at Gamescom. I guess he did the keynote, actually. And he showed off. Uh, just an early look, a couple screenshots of a new map coming to Battlegrounds. I don't know when it's going to be in the game. It could be after the early access uh, period is over, maybe still during early access. I can pull up a a screenshot here for our Twitch audience, Um, but it's basically a desert map. Um, Nothing too crazy here. Tick, sand, tick, scrub. Uh, a lot of buildings in close proximity. Mm-hmm. So you've got kind of like a, a downtown, like city hub, I guess, um, with some pretty large buildings that presumably you'll be able to get up on top of some of these. Uh, I see some stairs on on some of them and some kind of more open areas. There's this very ominous uh, mountain like mountains, range, mountain range mm-hmm. in the background. I'm guessing the whole city is probably encircled yeah. by mountains so that you yeah. can't. Uh, you can't wander too far, but this seems like it will be a, a pretty big departure from the the existing map. I, I don't think any of us are Battlegrounds players. No, not really. I, none of us have really. Have really yeah. I feel like I failed. It, I feel like I should be. But. It it does though look really cool. Like I, especially if these buildings are, you know, fully built out on the inside. I could see that leading to some pretty it's cool. Lots of pylons like, as well. I feel like it's it's going to be sniper heavy. Yeah. It does seem like a lot of potential for snipers, given how many buildings there are. Uh, you could easily just find a window somewhere to hold mm-hmm. up in and just take down anybody going down a street. But I don't know, maybe some cool building to building. Yeah, I, I'm imagining like building to building or even like a, a, some floor by floor combat of if, you know, a team sets up on the top floor of some place and then people having to fight their way up would be pretty cool. Okay, well, that kind of takes us through most of the, the big news from Gamescom. Uh, so I'm going to move us on to Overwatch news. Yeah, uh, which, I mean, is it is coming out of Gamescom, most fair. of this news. Yeah. Uh, but there is... There's uh, been enough Overwatch stuff to kind of give it its own yeah. Uh, yeah. section here, I think. Yeah, so uh, let uh, will me... Will you be commenting on the Australia controversy? Uh, controversy? I didn't even realize there was controversy. Well, they used the word take out on an Australian map instead of take away. Ooh. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is... We'll have to, we'll have to call in uh, Sean Prescott, our they've Australian to, they've correspondent. Put, they've, put out, they've had to put out a statement <laughs> where they said we're still learning. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought Overwatch was supposed to be this global game yeah, with, no. uh, you know... Yeah, so uh, speaking of Australia, yes, this map you're referring to, there is a new Overwatch map coming. It is called Junkertown. Yes. It is set in Australia, in the Australian outback. It is home of Junkrat, the Junker junk. You don't say. 
Uh, yeah, it's like this Mad Max kind of inspired, you know, Thunderdome-y. The harsh and unforgiving outback. Yeah, it's it's pretty much exactly what you would expect from a, a Junker Town type place. But so it's a new escort map. You got to get on the payload. Uh, I believe the rough story of the map is you are attempting to, I guess, defeat the queen of junker town and there's a, a plot to bring her all these riches and it, are, is, junk- she, is she related to junkrat probably not i don't know like what if he's a prince is he the prince of junker town maybe he is I mean, he's, probably he's got not. junk in his name he right? does. well yeah he's a junker and there it's junker town but yeah so you're escorting this payload it is covered in gold and the riches of junk rat and road See, that's a take out then yeah mm. god which is disgraceful just... yeah that's not blizzard good. what were you thinking <sighs> cultural but, yeah, insensitivity the, especially good is the scrooge mcduckian vault that you will hopefully Full be able gold. to dive into yeah um and yeah so it's just uh, a new map pretty cool excited to play it it looks i mean all their stuff i don't i'm rubbish at overwatch but every time i see something from overwatch it brings me joy because mm-hmm. they just there's so much love in it. Yeah. They put so much detail in this map that you can see just watching this trailer even. A, a totally custom payload for... Yeah, I mean, all, like all the payloads are, are sort of unique to the map. Um, you know, in one of them, you're escorting the, like, limo of the movie director, and one of them is the, the bomb that you're escorting, so... I guess it especially stands yeah. out to me when it's a, a pile of junk. Yeah. Well, a pile of junk and riches that is, I believe, a cleverly disguised bomb. But yeah, so Junker Town is coming. Uh, it's, I believe, playable now at Gamescom and will probably hit the PTR sometime in the next couple weeks and on to release soon after that. Uh, but other cool stuff that is coming, I don't know if there's really anything to pull up to show off visual aid wise, um, but there's some pretty exciting balance changes coming. Um, that's in addition to what's currently on the PTR. Uh, so the big one is Diva, right? Yeah, Diva is getting a pretty big change. Her defense matrix is basically getting cut in half in terms of her power. Uh, it, the energy drain is increased, doubled. Uh, so that's it, the cost of using it. Is that right? Yeah, it, it, it has this like energy meter that as you hold it down, the meter depletes, and then when you're, it's not in use. It, Recharges. recharges so it's over time. depleting twice as fast. Yeah, now as yeah. So your up, effective yeah. uptime of the ability is cut in half. Um, but in exchange, so that that's obviously a pretty significant nerf to her survivability. But uh, the trade-off is she can now shoot her guns while using boosters, so she can like fly around and shoot at the same time. She's also getting a new ability. It's like a long-range rocket attack that does kind of small AOE damage. So the idea here is to basically kind of shift up the way that diva has played a fair bit getting letting her be more aggressive um less reliant on defense matrix and um hopefully that'll kind of shake up the the dive meta some that she is so important to in keeping the squishy dive heroes alive so i think that's pretty cool um another thing that's coming we don't actually have any details about this yet but during a kind of live stream q a um I think yesterday, uh, Scott Mercer, one of the game's producers, mentioned that Mercy is also going to be getting some pretty big changes. And, we, and that's a big deal because Mercy is yeah. is probably one of the most played heroes, right? She, she definitely is one of the most played heroes. She's like the pure healer of the game. Um, she, for lack of a better word, is one of the easiest heroes to play because all you kind of have to do is stand there attach your healing beam to people who are hurt and stay alive there's obviously a lot more to it than that and people who are good at playing mercy are uh highly valued um but yeah they're she's a very important hero to the cast and um but she also has a lot of problems mainly that she for a lot of people is boring to play she a lot of times feels essential to matches, so people feel like they can't play the other heroes or the other healing support heroes. Um, and also her ult, Resurrect, is sort of the opposite of... It, it changes her play style where it, when you have ult, it discourages you from actually playing because you 
want to not die so you can't be in the fight like right. healing yeah. people and so it's actually a better strategy often to not do your job and just stand in the back and then res people once they've died um so it's just a all-around kind of problematic situation and uh the they haven't said at all what they're doing to change her um do you have any they, guesses of how you could make mercy better uh i really don't know now's the time to put the wish list out there yeah I, this listening. is your chance Bo. well put your I, mark on i don't know because i don't play mercy <laughs> <laughs> but um, you've played against mercy right i have had, played against mercy, mercy and with mercy team. um i i'm gonna say i don't know because we I, I have commissioned our resident overwatch expert uh damien who's a pro player to to write on this very subject and so later this week we will, we will get back to you <laughs> we will yeah we will have a take on Bo will what, soon have opinions <laughs> yes i i ask the experts and they tell me what i should feel about this game that i care so much about uh and so last we have a new cinematic from yes. may this broke my heart that just came out I today just, the overwatch animated short today. Yeah. i nearly had to go home it was it's it's heartbreaking um but yeah it's the story of may we we sort of already knew this story um you could find out a fair bit of the info from the in-game lore lore but yeah basically may was this researcher out on a remote arctic base and um is this really sad it's super sad she she basically there's a storm and they go into cryo sleep <laughs> that's what's supposed to be for just like the duration of the storm Rachel's, and rachel can't take it it Too instead much. of waking up a few weeks later she wakes up nine years later and her entire team is dead nice uh and so I mean, she then tragic yeah um, this is like Pixar quality. By yeah, the, way. the yeah. Blizzard's animated hurry shorts. Hurry up and hurry up and really do like a series or a movie. That's yeah. my feeling. Because I love Overwatch. I love the lore. I'm not good at the game, but I just I want more of the stories in the world. And yeah. it seems the inevitable, comics are great. Right? Like, how is there not going to be like a Disney XD Saturday mm. morning Overwatch show? I feel like it, there should be. If, or a Netflix. If any or... game has ever been the right thing to you know have a really great movie or tv show then yeah. this is it i mean they they've done a lot of these overwatch animated the the animated shorts and uh all of them are this fantastic high quality animation and so yeah that's a a commonly held opinion people would would really love to see so what if what if the overwatch show was uh use the same structure as lost where <laughs> like 60 percent of yeah exactly so 60 percent of the episode is about uh like and some kind of current overwatch Can we talk conflict about the slippers right? as well mm -hmm. look at the look God, at the amazing so yeah little sleep where she's in so yeah the show would be bouncing between current overwatch conflicts and then past backstories yeah. for for the characters yeah i mean because the the overwatch mythos and overall plot like has has stretched about i think 80 to 100 years at this point in terms of the Jeez. stories we've been getting um and uh and yeah so i think that that actually is a a setting or a, a format She's that would, would work this is that's pretty dark yeah she's making them tea and then she finds out oh no we've been and asleep nine bowl. years so how often do they put these shorts out is it like every six months or so uh no, it's more often than that yeah it's more often than that the I last one it doesn't one, feel like it's on a schedule does it it feels yeah. like they kind of when they're ready we've we've been getting a new hero roughly every four months i think three to four months um but yeah the the animated shorts are less scheduled and uh and like and this one doesn't really have it's not tied to anything like it has nothing to do with doomfist the newest hero it has nothing to do with junker town the newest map or like any of the new modes or whatever so it's just a little piece of overwatch history and telling the story of may all right well i'm gonna move us on to the q a uh mm. so if you want to ask us some questions go ahead and start typing those in the chat um but a m a but before we get to that, uh, I want to take a bit of a detour based on something this you said. Off the script, what <laughs> are we doing? Uh, so we'll do it live. Bo, during your description of Junkertown, you mentioned the Scrooge McDuck esque vault yeah. uh, that that was in Junkertown. Have you guys both watched the new Ducktales? I haven't. Should I? I haven't yet. I've heard oh, it's super good. Oh my god! 
Well, you have just ruined my tangent here because I was going to talk to you about how good the DuckTales is. I know the cast, which is like amazing. Oh, I, need to, I used to love DuckTales, although it gave me, the DuckTales the movie gave me nightmares. I can see that <laughs> as a kid, yeah. The uh, kind of creepy bad character. A little intense. Yeah. Uh, so the new DuckTales, I was honestly shocked by how good it was <laughs> because I had watched the, I'd seen like some screenshots from it and yeah. the art style didn't hadn't totally won me over. Mm-hmm. Um, and as I think... Uh, is it David Tennant? This David mm-hmm. Tennant is is a new Scrooge. I thought his he's he was good, but it's still hard to hear anyone other yeah. than Alan Young as mm-hmm. Scrooge. You know, he did that role for so long. But I would say within a couple minutes of watching the new show, you can just tell how good it's gonna be. You can tell like the voices for the characters are they're they're fine. Like the 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 new uh, the individual voices for the new nephews actually gives them each a real personality. Whereas in the original you DuckTales, really discern the difference between they were a character. Yeah. Right? They were the nephews the yeah. exactly, and Scrooge was kind of the the driving force. The new show it has some classic Donald Duck in there. Like he's wearing a throwback. Uh, like sailor's uniform from like the old comics. Nice. He's he like staples himself to a wall at one point in like a fight with a stapler because he he get, yeah. loses his temper. Uh, so it has some good Donald slapstick. The nephews all have their unique personalities, but it's not trying to like beat you over the head with it. Scrooge sounds younger, but he sounds he sounds great. Like it, it's a perfect balance between homage to that original character mm-hmm. and kind of a newer, younger voice. The animation style is gorgeous. It looks really good in motion. Uh, it's free on YouTube. They put the first episode oh. up. It's like a double episode. Definitely so won't it's... just be watching that this afternoon. Yes, <laughs> it's like 45 right, minutes long. Uh, I highly recommend <sighs> it. I think the show itself starts in like a month or something. Mm-hmm. They put out this first episode as sort of a, nice. a premiere ahead of time. Um, but yeah, it's it's really good stuff. So go watch DuckTales. Yeah. I'm, I'm on board. If you like original DuckTales, go watch DuckTales. If you've never seen DuckTales, go watch Someone's DuckTales. Someone's asked go watch a DuckTales. DuckTales question. All right. Yeah, ask exclusively DuckTales question, <laughs> yeah. and, Extra and I will, points I will get you, to your uh... question for sure. Uh, and, and also thanks to everybody who has subscribed on Twitch uh, today during the show. I haven't read out all the names, um, but I know I saw a few new subscribers. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Uh, let's take some questions. Verendil asks, what games do you think don't get nearly enough love, whether it's poor review scores or just not as well known as it deserves? For me, it's the Tropico games. I never hear anyone talking about them, but I think they're brilliant. I've never played a Tropico game, but I will go home tonight and play a Tropico game. On that recommendation? Yeah. Well, you have like six to choose from or something, (laughs) so five five maybe? There's a bunch of Tropico games. Which one should I start with? Someone tell me. Internet, tell me. Yeah, tell us the best Tropico, uh, so Baron Deal, since beginner. you're a fan. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what what are games that you think just don't get enough get enough love? Um, I mean, I think that we we we've had a little bit of discussions about this, but uh, Prey was really very highly regarded, but then didn't sell super well, and I think not enough people played that. Mm. Yeah, I think so much of that was the people the marketing of a people kind of mm-hmm. in their heads had it as well this is just dishonored in space and it's so different from that and it's mm-hmm. so you know it's so much fun just running around with the systems in that sandbox and yeah i felt like that got a really a really rough ride actually mm-hmm. um it's on sale right now know. actually there's i think a, a humble on humble store a bunch of bethesda games are on sale and prey is like 50 yeah, off oh it's definitely worth picking up it's just you you know you'll just have if you're the sort of person that likes going in and finding ways to sort of break games and trick systems it's kind mm-hmm. of built because it wants you to do that everything about it is begging for you to kind of find a weird way to solve a to problem. Solve problem yeah uh, I'll throw out one that I've maybe mentioned on the podcast before, but I've definitely talked about it in our Discord uh, channel with our PC Gamer Club members. Uh, this game I love that's on Steam, Super House of Dead Ninjas. It's a... It's uh, I've never heard of this game. It's about four, probably four years old now. Uh, it's a throwback to SNES, like, action platformer games, nice. and uh, complete with, like, a CRT scanline filter, if you want to turn that on, and... Uh, fake slowdown 
when the sc- like the screen gets really busy with particle effects and stuff. <laughs> uh, so that's optional. You can turn it on or off if you want. I really like it on because there's this great feeling of when there's a bunch of enemies coming at you and you're like, uh, it's basically a super fast action game, 2D action game. So you're like slicing heads off dudes with your ninja sword and like throwing katanas and bombs at stuff. And when you get in kind of a flow state with it, you can just tear through, uh, through levels. Mm-hmm. And when you decapitate like three enemies with one swing or something the frame rate like drops down to you know 12 fps or something like that for a couple seconds which feels really authentic to super nintendo games that just couldn't handle too much stuff on Mm -hmm. screen at one time like r type or gradius or something uh so it's a really fun game it's a it's a roguelike but you get some meta progression so you unlock like extra lives Mm -hmm. and new weapons and stuff so that you can kind of make it further and further through this tower that you're trying to descend as you go and it's like five bucks on steam or something so highly recommended uh let's see score pooler asked do you guys think we'll get a new ducktales game yes all right. I mean, I think if you're if you're launching any new TV show, surely yeah, you've got that built into the plan somewhere. Like it might not be a good one, and it might be like a, you know, yeah, iPad Dis- only. Disney has you know game studios. Well, that's it. I mean, it'll be there in some maybe a Switch game or a yeah. You know, it, it, it may not and probably will not be good. Yeah. But it, there will be a game. The original Ducktales is great. Though, yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Dragoa X asks, "Can you talk about Quake Champions and QuakeCon?" Uh, we can talk about it a little bit. I don't know if have you played Quake Champions at all, Rachel? No. Yeah. So I don't think any of us have played mm-hmm. Quake Champions yet. It just hit early access uh, today. Yeah. I believe. Uh, so it's eventually. Quake, QuakeCon's starting today, right? Uh, I believe today? it starts tomorrow. Huh. I think it starts tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so Quick Champions is going to be free to play eventually, but right now you have to buy in through yeah. early access. I think it's $40, um, or 30 or 40 bucks mm-hmm. for the, like, Champion Founders Pack or whatever they're calling it. Um, yeah, none of us have played it yet, but it, it is on the docket. We'll have impressions on it pretty soon. Mm-hmm. And we have a couple guys, uh, on the ground at QuakeCon, so we'll have some hands-on stuff with... Evil Within, with uh, Quake Champions, with Wolfenstein. We'll have some interviews coming out of the show. So expect that on the site over the next four days or so. Yeah. Uh, so Austin Wood, uh, shout out to Austin. He's a writer for the site. He actually asked a question in chat. He said, what do you want from the new PUBG map? Since none of us play <laughs> PUBG, yeah. we're not the best uh, people to answer Puppies. this one. <laughs> I would like a map with puppies. I have no idea what to say. I I would like to see it play substantially differently from Mm. the other map, like feel like kind of a different game in the way you have to approach the strategy of how you survive on this map and when you engage uh, in fights and stuff like that. And hopefully not reveal any sort of deficiencies in the grand scheme of the PUBG design. Mm -hmm. It would be kind of a shame for them to launch the second map and then be like, oh, this game kind of only works well because of (laughs) the elements of this one map or something. But I I don't think that's going to be a problem. I was just thinking, like, I wonder if they could do a different version of the shrinking circle that you have to, you know, force field you have Mm. to play inside. Like, I don't know, maybe, maybe that still exists, but every so often, like, different buildings will... Bl- explode or something and periodically there's less and less places to hide we're we're getting a few votes for uh tropico 4 as the, the go-to you, tropico Internet. game i will hit up my steam account uh okay let's see what else we got questions questions uh have there been any updates to the harvest moon game that's coming to pc asks battle tank uh 09 I haven't seen any in a in a while, no. and I am quite excited about it because yeah. I the Harvest Moon game. Yeah, have you seen what the Harvest Moon game looks like? Is it bad? It's bad. Yeah, oh, uh, I just want there to be a good Harvest Moon game. So again. The, the good Harvest Moon game is Stardew Valley. <laughs> so um, I've I, I think love I've Stodgy. talked about this before a long time ago on the podcast. Uh, the Harvest Moon name no longer resides with the developers of Harvest Moon. Oh. It's this weird thing where I believe Natsume is the 
was the longtime publisher of mm-hmm. Harvest Moon in the States, yeah. but and they own the name, but they did not actually develop the games. Uh, they still own the name and have now taken over development the past two years or so and have made some real bad looking mobile Harvest Moon games. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the original development team of the Harvest Moon series now makes the story of seasons games on the 3DS, which are supposed to be quite good. They're basically modern Harvest Moon. Mm. Uh, Those, unfortunately, have not been announced for PC in any capacity yet. So I would not have any high hopes for Harvest Moon. That must be sad. They they look very cheap, unfortunately. Uh, Let's see, what else do we have? I saw one that asked, uh, what's the game that you disliked but have had to finish? But as people that work writing about video games, mm-hmm. that's that's a lot. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah what's the one. game uh, you've least Bandit. enjoyed playing? Mutton Bandit asked, yeah, what's the game you've least enjoyed playing but completed anyway? I mean, that's true of when you're reviewing stuff of so many games. Yeah. Because that's like why I don't like writing game yeah. reviews. Well, especially if you're going to be them. mean, you, you have, you're have you sort of even more uh, under even more pressure to kind of give it a fair... Mm-hmm. A fair hearing. I think maybe the official Lost game made me the most <laughs> wow. angry and sad, and I had to finish it. That was upsetting. So this isn't a PC game, but I recently played uh, Yoshi's Island for the first time, uh, and did not care for Yoshi's Island. <laughs> played it, played all the way through it. Uh, wonderfully, wonderful looking game. Great graphics. Tons of personality. Baby Mario can fuck right off <laughs> with, with, his, with his wailing. I'm going to get you a t-shirt with that on. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't... It depends. I'm so... I'm. Yeah, if I'm just playing for me personally, I'm really... And I'm, I'm so promiscuous with my Steam account. So I just... <laughs> if, if something hasn't... If within 10 minutes I'm annoyed with something, I'm Shut moving it off. on. Yeah. Life's too short. I rented Final Fantasy 13 when that came out and played the first half of that game, which is the real bad half, as opposed <laughs> to the less bad half, and then I returned it. So I don't know if that counts as finishing it. I finished my rental period. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know if I have a good example for this. Um, I think I similarly, like, just yeah. ditch the game if I'm not enjoying it. So Turdog asked, uh, is anyone in the office going to try the Destiny 2 beta? Yes. And definitely. Oh, it sounds yeah. like you're going to be playing yes. it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I'll have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Tim and James will absolutely yeah. be playing it, and uh, probably, probably some, all of us as well. Probably some of our UK uh, colleagues oh, for sure. will yeah. be on there. Um, I probably won't play the beta. I'm actually going on vacation next week anyway, so I won't be around to play it. But I'll probably play You'll the... come back in the office or just be... <laughs> just be out, yeah. Destiny. Tim will probably be in withdrawals from not being able to play it. Well, he's. I think he's... Uh, banned any sort of vacations or or leaving the country until December now from from Destiny (laughs) launch until December so he'll be playing almost full time Uh, so in our discord uh, channel earlier JBJ Blaze asked if I may ask for the show uh, with Quake Champions having now hit early access do you think more AAA studios may follow suit with their games and is this trend just getting worse it's a good question. Um, I mean, there, we've had a lot of discussions about early access in general and whether it's a good or a bad thing. Um, and, I mean, I think if you're yeah. a studio triple A or not, you want as much money as you can up front. And if they think people will pay for it, they'll keep doing it. It's... Yeah. I, I think early access is a very powerful tool for small developers especially those who want to make a game but can't or don't want to work on it full time yeah um i have several friends who are they make a game they like have a game that's their project and it's in perhaps perpetually early access um because they have a day job and like making this game is what they do on the side and the game can just kind of exist and people can buy it or pay some for it and they can continue to add features um while you know making it at their own pace uh and i think that that's really great that it you know is a way for people to uh make a game like that but if you're making it early access purely for the sake of 
getting more money out of it, then that's obviously terrible and should not be encouraged whatsoever. Um, I think I'm more comfortable with developers, b bigger developers using early access as a way to gather feedback and, mm -hmm. and change their their game for the better than I am them using Kickstarter or crowdfunding yeah. in the same way. And yeah. Like if you're if you're a company that can afford your continued existence, you can afford these big marketing budgets, you can afford all this stuff. Do you really need to go to your fans for one million dollars yeah. yeah. to kickstart this this project, you know? Because early access, I think we're going to continue to see more of the kind of sticky questions we've seen, like with Ark Survival Evolved, where they're changing the price of the game in early access. They're releasing paid expansions while the game is still doesn't perform well or has issues mm -hmm. in early access. We're just going to get more complications like that yeah. as more bigger companies use early access, I think. But in general, I'm all for the ability to put a game out there and think like oh yeah we have we have our magic system down it's awesome and then people come in and play and poke a million holes in it yeah and if they hadn't put it out in early access that's either yeah. a shitload of post-game patches that you have to do or like oops that system just sucks forever yeah now, you know? yeah I, I, I definitely agree that 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 is a good approach to it you using it to gather feedback and and if it's approached that way i'm i'm pretty okay with it uh, let's see if we can get one or two more questions in here. Uh, anybody else have a, a question for us before we sign off? If we, if you've asked a question and we've missed it, um, feel free to throw it up again, and we can. Try Mutt and grab Mutton it. Bandit also asked, if you were in Twitch chat right now, what would you ask? Oh, that's meta. Yeah, I would ask, why aren't other people asking questions? <laughs> All right. Well, we we can call it there. I think we've got a uh, we answered some good ones. There's a ton of news coming out of the site for the pat for the next like week and a half because we've still got Gamescom stuff kind of rolling through. Mm -hmm. QuakeCon is this weekend. Next weekend is PAX. Yeah. Uh, so and the Destiny beta in between that stuff. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of lot of news hitting. Uh, we're going to be at PAX. We're going to be shooting a bunch of videos. So you get to see a lot of a lot of cool games, a lot of indie games from from PAX. I won't be there. I'll be on vacation. I enjoy the question. Yeah. What have you been talking about? I'm late. <laughs> well. <laughs> Lucky for you, you let's can just, watch let's the Let's just roll it back yeah. here. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, you can, top. as usual, you can find us here, uh, twitch.tv slash PCGamer at one o'clock uh, on Wednesdays, one o'clock Pacific. And you can find us on YouTube slash PC Gamer, obviously PCGamer.com. Uh, you can find our podcast on iTunes, pretty much wherever you would expect to find it. Subscribe. Google rate, it. You'll, you'll find us. Yeah. Leaving a review really helps uh, nice. for the podcast. My mom might read it. Yeah. Unless it's a bad review, because then you'll make Rachel's mom cry. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. She's very sensitive. That would be pretty rude. So, yeah, don't do not do that. Uh, so we'll be back next week. Um, someone, will, someone will be here next week. I Pro might be back. Probably James. Yeah. I won't be here. I'll be... I'll be Where are in, you going? So I'm going back to, to Georgia to visit friends and family. Uh, I will be sweating profusely because bring it's very hot there. Can you bring I, the do you want some, Yeah, do you want some humidity from Georgia? <laughs> Just I can, a jar I can of bring humidity. That. Um, I, I might bring you some fried southern food or something. Yeah. Or a shirt Is there that like says, a Georgian candy? Uh, I mean, peaches are a big thing. There's uh, like saltwater taffy candy. from salt from Savannah. Taffy. There's um, but that's uh, not where you're going. boiled peanuts. Yeah. Is that real, thing. real disgusting southern thing? Your definition of candy is loose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying. Peaches, peanuts. Trying. Peaches. You've listed several things that literally none of them are candy. Well, I can't think of a candy, so I'm giving you alternatives. Some good barbecue. Yeah. yeah. So that, that'll be my week next Still week. not candy. Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Again, not candy. <laughs> there isn't a candy. This is what I've. This is what we've established. All right, that's. I think that's a wrap for this week. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thank yeah, you. Thanks for Thank joining you for us. Me. And we are out. I thought it was fun. <laughs>